Welcome to ICA's video channel, taking the message of Jesus Christ to the world. For more information, go to our website at icahk.org. I love you too. <laughs> good morning, I see. Oh, good afternoon. Sorry, good afternoon, I see, Taiwan. Yeah. So, how many of you were at ICA North Point last week? Oh, how many of you were there on Friday? <laughs> so, you know, we're here in this series called first and then friday we've heard a really powerful message from uh, pastor betty remember the first commandment loving the lord your god with all your heart all your soul and all your mind right and and it's easy because he loved us first right and then on sunday you've heard another powerful message from pastor ed that we are all the firstborn of god how many of you got healed over that message, I did, you know, because I know that I'm a child of God. I know I'm a daughter, son, daughter of God. But it's always been like one of, right? I'm one of the daughter of God. I'm one of the children of God. But I tell you, when Pastor S said, no, you are the firstborn of God, it was like, wow. <laughs> I'm not just one, you know, Pastor Ed's favorite, you know, you're not just another one. You are the first one, right? Wow, first child of God. There's just something about the authority, you know, that favor and blessing that you get as the firstborn child. How many of you are first child in the family? Yeah, hey. Yeah, and as a firstborn, yes, there's responsibilities, but, but I don't know. Were you the favorite of your, of your parent, or your dad or mom? Okay, I spent a lot, I've, I spent a lot, I find out that I, I spent a lot of time with my dad. I'm his eating partner. He took me everywhere with him to eat. You know, it's just, there's just this blessing and favor when, you're the, when you are the firstborn, right? So now today I'm going to talk to you about first love. How many of you are in love? Okay, good. So I'm going to start, before I start the message, I'm going to tell you a story about, well, you've heard my story anyways. You know, I grew up in Canada. I grew up in a Catholic school. All right. So for me, you know, stories about the Bible, God, Jesus, you know, it's nothing new. Okay. In fact, I can, I could physical Bible. I could flip through. You tell me the book. I could tell. I could flip through it within a minute because I know the order of the Bible by heart because I've spent five years having to pass religious study exams. All right. So I had to know. So I, this, I know this. I mean, it, was until, it wasn't until senior high school that I don't have to take religious studies anymore. So I know the Bible. But for me, my upbringing, I always have this impression of God as being a harsh, disciplinary God. You know? So when I came to Hong Kong, when I have Christian friends, especially friends from my CA, and they're like, wow, you know, God is a loving God. I'm like, no, nah, no. You know, what are you talking about? Loving God? I didn't understand until September 1999. You know, the, you, know, you know the story. You know, I was invited to a home group, and they were praying over me. I can, I, I can tell you right now exactly where that sofa is, where I'm sitting, the table between, you know, the two seats. I, I, I could tell you, I have, I could tell you like a picture perfect, exactly what that living room looks like. It was there that I f literally felt God's love crashing over me like a tsunami. And that was my first encounter with the loving God. It was like, wow, God, you really love me. 
you know, and it was amazing time. I was like, wow, I was so in love with God. It was like I was reading the Bible cover to cover. How many of you have read the Bible cover to cover? Right? I didn't even skip through Chronicles, all the boring parts about who beget whom, okay? I was that in love with God. You know, and it's the same as the early church. They were in love with God, especially the church in Ephesus. And we see, we see, we first hear about the church in Ephesus in Acts chapter 19. And you know what? Actually, Paul spent two years there ministering. Can you imagine being ministered to by like the apostle Paul? Okay, so here in Acts chapter 19 verse 1, it says, And it happened that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul passed through the inland country and came to Ephesus. In verse 8, he reasoning daily in the hall of Tyrannus. And then verse 10 to 12, this continued for two years. We are entering into, we've just passed our two years mark anniversary. We're now entering the third year. So can you imagine Paul speaking to you for two years? Don't you want to have that? Right? And it says here that so that all the residents of Asia heard the word of the Lord, both Jews and Greeks. And God was doing extraordinary miracles by the hands of Paul. So that even handkerchiefs or aprons that had been touched, that had touched his skin, were carried away to the sick. And their disease left them and the evil spirit came out of them. Wow, the church in Ephesus was this powerful, great church where there were just like vibrant church, signs and miracles, right? Healing taking place. The presence of God was so strong that people of other faith, they renounced their idol worship and they gave up. You know, their idol worship came to God and they even give up the you know, the items of worship, let's continue in verse 18 to 20. It says that also many of those who were now believers came, confessing and diverging their practices. And a number of those who had practiced magic arts brought their books together and burned them in the sight of all. And they count the value of them and found it came to 50,000 pieces of silver. We're talking like millions of dollars in today's terms. So the word of the Lord continue to increase and prevail mightily. I want to be in a church like that. Don't you want to be in a church like that? Wow, such wonderful things, right? And look at what Paul says about them. You know, in Ephesus chapter 1, verse 15 to 16. For this reason, because I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints, I do not cease to give thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers. Wow. Can you imagine that? You know, last Christmas, Pastor Ed wrote a Christmas card for all the staff in the office. And you know what? It was a personal message. And if you go to the office at Marble Road now, when you, if you walk around the office, you'll find that many of the staff actually put that card up, put, you know, pin it in the cubicle. Because a personal message from my senior pastor that says he appreciates me. Can you imagine the church in Ephesus? Wow, Paul says, I, whenever I think of you, I thank God for you. I pray about you. Can you imagine how they must have felt? You know, in, and Paul loved this church so much, right? And we can, and he's saying all these wonderful, you know, they love God. They love one another. Can you imagine being known as a church that loves God and loves one another? Wow, it's amazing. And, you know, and we can learn. You know, last Friday, we learned from Pastor Betty about the first commandment. We can learn from the church of Ephesus how to love 
God. You know how to keep that first commandment. So, being, what does first love mean? So, first love is simply just being in love with God. How many of you are in love with God? Tell the near neighbor, I'm in love with God. Right? Now, remember how you felt? I know most of you, what, two-thirds of you are married, right? I'm not mistaken. Okay. Remember that first moment when you realize that this person in front of you is like it? Right? Uncle Benji, right? Yeah, uh, okay. So remember when you felt you lay eyes on Ate Alice and then you go, Whoa, this is it, right? Don't laugh. You think of your husband. Come on, hey. Right, right, David. Right. Everything is just so bright. The air is so much fresher. Right? The flowers are so much more vibrant colored. Everything is just more, wow. Isn't it? That moment when you first fell in love. And this is what's happening with the church in Ephesus. They literally fell in love with God. And like the presence of God was so strong. Right? I mean, things were happening. Signs and miracles. They were praying for healing like what we did, you know. The, the altar, they were praying for healing, and people were getting healed. People were getting saved. In fact, people knew about the church of Ephesus, you know, and Paul and the disciples, and they, all, they, were, they were hearing wonderful, great things about this church in Ephesus. Not only that, they were actually doctrinally sound, Literally study the word of God. You know, ICH Taiwan, you know, it's in our heart that we have an active presence in God. We want you to all be, you know, having a living relationship with God, right? We want you to be vibrant. We want you to have, to love the Lord. We want you to be out there witnessing. In fact, this whole second row is empty because they're out there somewhere. I hope. Outreaching, okay? So, you know, that's what we want for Taiwan, don't we? You know, inviting God's presence and, in, and be an inviting presence to the neighborhood. And in, among all these wonderful things that's happening, you know, with all such wonderful, you know, praises being said about the church of Ephesus, we come to today's verse in Revelations chapter 2. You know, the, you know Revelation chapter 2? That's the beginning of the letters to the seven churches. In fact, each church was rebuked by Jesus for doing something. Let's see what he has to say about the church in Ephesus. In Ephesus, Revelations chapter 2 verse 1, it says, The angel To the angel of the church in Ephesus write, The words of him who holds the seven stars in his right hand, who walks among the seven golden lampstands, I know your works, your toils, your patient endurance, and how you cannot bear with those who are evil, but have tested those who call themselves apostles and are not, and found them to be false. I know you are enduring patiently and bearing up for my name's sake, and you have not grown weary. So far, so good, right? We want to be like that. And then in verse 4, look at what Jesus has to say. But I have this against you, that you have abandoned the love you had at first. They have forgotten their love for God. They have lost their first love. What happened? You know, such a vibrant church, such a spiritual church. What happened to them? You know, I don't think anyone ever wakes up in the morning one day and just say, hmm, today I think I'm going to leave Jesus. Or if you're married, you, won't, you know, your, the husband or the wife, they wouldn't wake up one day and say, hmm, today I'm going to walk out of this home, this marriage. I don't think anyone ever does that, ever think like that, right? 
you know. So what happened? What happened to that love? What happened to that bling? You know, sometimes we forget that it's a relationship. You know, I've talked to couples, you know, people who are con contemplating separation, divorce, and and I'm, I was surprised. That usually, the reason that I or, or the reason that he gave me is that, you know, we were madly in love with each other. Then we fell out of love. Like, how can you fall out of love? You know, sometimes, if we're not careful, we forget to work at this, relation, this love relationship. We let other things in. And we misplace the person who should be in our heart with something else. We replace, you know, our spouse, our husband or our wife with something else. It could be work. It could be, you know, day-to-day -day arguments. It could be miscontent. It could be even children. Do you know that you could let children come between you and your spouse? Because you put them first before that. You know, and next one thing leads to another, and then the love for each other grows cold. And then one day you come and you say, well, you know what, Pastor Mokwan? I f we fell out of love with each other. Let me tell you my story. You know, same as a couple, this can happen to the church. And this is exactly what happened to the church in Ephesus. They were, they were doing many great works, yet they, the work became it. It replaced Jesus. You know, you know I, let me share with you what happened to me. Before I was in Taiwan, I was, um, you know, I have many, many, it, as many of us in the church, we have many, we wear many hats, okay? We have many roles. I was a kingdom group leader. I was a, you know, I was, um, over, I was the uh, ministry uh, director of uh, the uh, middle school ministry of 11 to 13 year olds. I was also ministry director of um, overseeing, you know, the iCafe. Some of you were there last week. And, you know, hospital care, funerals. And then I'm also the co event coordinator for um, citywide events. So there's a lot of things happening in the year for me. And you know what? For seven years, I wasn't able to go to service because I was serving in, you know, in the, in the, uh, in the middle school ministry. I didn't wait. I didn't, like, I didn't consciously say, oh, I think I'm going to you know, forget about Jesus. But it was like, oh God, you know, today, you know what? I have, I've, I've been on the phone for like five, six hours with government officials talking about, you know, just talking about license and stuff for, for, for one P1C, you know, like, God, I'm tired. Can I go to sleep? You know, like, I'll talk to you tomorrow. Oh, today, Lord, I don't have time to really read the Bible because I have so many things line up. You know, I let, you know, I let work took the place of Jesus. Like, God, I'm doing things for you. Come on. Right? You can forgive me, right? Oh, it's like, oh, you know what? There's a party this afternoon. I need to cook. I don't have time to come to the service because I have to cook for my sisters. And you do this every week. You know, I, was, it beca I became so dry. One, I didn't even realize it until one day Holy Spirit just went, Paf! Hey, what's happening to you? Where am I in your decision making? Who am I to you? And I'm like, oh, wow. Lord, I didn't realize. I've forgotten about you. Like, I need you back in my life, God. You know, that's what's happened. And, you know, if we're not careful, we can let things come into our hearts, not just things, but people come into our hearts, and we place Jesus. We place that first love just like 
the church in Ephesus. Silence, okay. Very solemn, right? This is not an easy, you know, like I was telling the 9.30, 10 o'clock uh, church, the bilingual church, this is not an easy message to teach. What? You're telling me about first love? I don't love God anymore? Like, what are you talking about? But, you know, it's, I'm not saying that, no, you're not going to love God. But I'm telling you, if we're not careful, we will fall into the trap that the church of Ephesus fallen into. We will lose our love, our passion for Jesus and say, oh, and let work, ministry, pe other people come in and replace it, you know? So how do you win kindle that flame of love? You know, our God is a very good God. He loves us so much. He will discipline you, but then he will always tell you what to do next. He gives you a solution. So, Revelations chapter 2, continue on. After he rebuked them for losing their first love, guess what he says? He says in verse 5, Remember, therefore, from where you have fallen. So what are you to do? You are to remember, to reflect on your relationship. Remember back that moment when God calls you. When God says, Irene, I love you. I love you so much. Be my daughter. Right? Or, you know, or the moment, you know, the moment you realize that, wow, God loves me. Thank you, God. I love you too. You have to go back to that. We go back to those moments that it was Jesus who loved us first, who called us first. You know, in John chapter 15, verse 16 to 17, it says, You did not choose me, but I chose you. Tell the person next to you, Jesus chose you and me. Right? Jesus said, I choose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should abide so that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give it to you. These things I command you so that you will love one another. So what are we to remember? Where do we remember that Jesus loves us first? You know, whenever that I find myself you know, drifting, I would go back to September 1999. I would go back to that sofa. And I, will and I will recall how much God loves me. In fact, you know, even just now as I'm telling you, I, I can remember, I could literally felt his arms wrapped around me. And just like, oh, you're my precious, precious, precious. I love you so much. And Every time I say this, every time I remember this, actually, I get emotional. So, remembering, remembering that moment, remembering who God is, right? Your Father, Abba Father in heaven. And guess what? Remembering results in repenting. Okay, as we continue on in second half of verse 5, it says, repent. And do the works you did at first. If not, I will come to you and remove your lampstand from its place unless you repent. So we are to, once you real, remember, once you realize what had happened, you are to ask God to forgive and bring you back. What's repenting? Repenting is turning around from the direction you were going and go the other way. Right? This is the wrong direction. I need to repent and go, to the, go the other way. You know, Oscar, I'm oh, sorry, not Oscar. Oswald Chamber once said, the only way to keep true to God is by a steady, persistent refusal to be interested in Christian work and be interested alone in Jesus Christ. Wow, does that mean I don't have to serve anymore? 
right? If Pastor Mokwan, you when you call for volunteers for children's church, I don't have to raise my hand. No. <laughs> you still have to raise your hand, okay? So what is he talking about? He's saying, don't let work replace Jesus. Jesus comes first because serving or work, so to speak, should come out of your worship, an outflow of your worship. In worship, here I'm not saying raising your hand and singing at the beginning of the service. I'm talking about your relationship with God, your love for God. It should come out of that because work without worship is religion. You're doing it by rota, okay? Work from worship, that's relationship. That's love. Amen? Yeah. So we have to be careful not to replace Jesus with work, with other things, even if it's good stuff, even if it's ministry, even if it's your kids, even if it's your spouse. Jesus should come first. Right? Pastor Ed's favorite. Right? He should be the only one. And the only one means that he is in your life 24-7. You know, um, John, Pastor John Binon shared this story. You know, this, um, this elderly lady who is a very devout Christian, one day she had the chance to have to serve Queen Victoria at her home for tea. So her neighbors were all excited because, wow, you know, you have privilege of serving Queen Victoria for tea at your home. So they came and talked in, and, and, to, and afterwards to talk to the lady. And they were like, oh, wow, who is... So they thought, oh, since she loved God so much, between her and Queen Victoria, she most likely would choose Jesus, right? So they were like, who is the most important person you have ever met in your life and they're thinking wow she must have she will say jesus and then she said oh queen victoria and they were like what i thought you're gonna say jesus will be the most important you know guest sorry guest that you have ever met and she goes oh but jesus is not a guest he lives in my home wow yeah you have to be better than that. Come on, amen. <laughs> you know, so he should be a part of you. You know, first love means, you know, okay, yesterday we had a really beautiful wedding here, right? I think, I know, you're the only one who came. <laughs> it was the, the bilingual service. We had Jun Jun and uh, Jason. They got married, and it was so beautiful. And the vows that they, they spoke to each other, right, is that they would love one another through sickness, through sickness, and, in, in, sickness and in health till death do us part. So what does first love mean? First love means being in love from the first day to the last day. And in between the first day and the last day, you have to work on that relationship to keep it alive, to make it you know, to keep, that, to keep that love flame going. And now, remember, right? You have to remember. You have to repent. And last but not least, you have to return. Okay? You have to recover your first love by returning to Jesus. I like the message version better. So let me read it to you. Re Revelations chapter 2, verse 4 to 5. But you walked away from your first love. Why? What's going on with you, anyway? Do you have any idea how far you've fallen? A Lucifer fall. Turn back. We cover your dear early love. No time to waste. For I'm well on my way to removing your light from the golden circle. So how do we turn back? How do we recover your early love? By... You know, Jesus also gave us the answer in John chapter 15, verse 4 to 8. Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine. Neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, 
you are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him, he is the he it is that bears much fruit. For far apart from me, you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is flown away like a branch and withers. And the branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. By this, my Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit, and so prove to be my disciple. So, how do we return? By always, always, always abide in Jesus, because away from Jesus is death. And only when we are abide in Him do we have life in the fullness. You know. How do we get this first love? It's not doing more, getting a new love. It's actually right here. In.、Um, In verse five of chap of chapter two of Rev- the book of Revelations, see Jesus said, "You have abandoned the love you had at first. So now remember it. Remember that love, and repent. Turn back. And guess what? And do the works you did at first. Means going back to what you have always been doing." Not more, just what you have always been doing, and what have they always been doing? Let's go back to what Paul says in chapter one of Ephesians. I've heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love towards all the saints. So, what is that thing that they have been doing all the time? They have been doing from the first. They have been following the first commandment: loving God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind, and then loving your neighbor as you love yourself. See, God is not asking you to do something else. God is to ask, telling you, do what you have been doing. Do what you did when you first loved me. When you first realize that I love you, love me with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, and love the others, your neighbor as you have loved yourself. See, that is first love. That's being in love with God. Amen. So, you know, my prayer for you is that you don't do what I've done. Don't fall into the. Don't make the same mistake I did. But always, always, always put God's kingdom and His righteousness first before anything else. At all times, being in love with Him from day one to the last day. Amen. 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 Let's all stand. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we just want to thank you for that reminder. Indeed, Lord, that. You love us first. You called us, Lord Father. You chose us, Lord Father. You set us apart, Lord, and we love out of that response to your love, Lord Father. Holy Spirit, help us, Lord Father. Examine our hearts, Lord Father. Help us to, you know, give and 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 um. And Lord, help us to keep that love alive, Lord Father, for you, so that it is the same. That we will love you, you will continue to be in love with you from fir- the first day to the last day. And not only do we keep our love for you, but we keep falling deeper and deeper and deeper in love with you. That the love that we have, Lord Father, will know no end. Just as your love for us has no bounds, Lord Father. Lord, thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. What a beautiful name is the name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a beautiful name it is. Nothing compares to this. What a beautiful name it is. The name. Come on, let's sing it one more time. What a beautiful name. What a beautiful name it is.